Well, hello again to baristas. Today I'm going to talk about a new film. First, I'm going to get a shot of Ukrainian honey beer. Good stuff. Made in the Ukraine, as you can see, in Lvov, from the Lvov Brewery, the home of Simon Wiesenthal. Which brings me to the new film that's come out called The Debt. This is not going to be a review of the film as such, because I haven't seen it. But that isn't necessary for my purpose here, because I'm not going to discuss the movie itself, but the premise behind it. For all I know, it may be a good film from a dramatic point of view, with good production values, etc. and such. Uh, as a matter of fact, it has uh, been featured on the back cover of this month's Nation magazine. And stars Helen Mirren and Sam Worthington and Jessica Chastain and Tom Wilkinson. Every secret comes with a price, according to the blurb. Okay, well, the plot of this film, based on an Israeli novel and then an Israeli movie of 2007, is that in the 1960s, a squad of Mossad assassins were charged with the elimination of the surgeon of Birkenau, uh, the death camp associated with Auschwitz, a Dieter Bogle, living in East Germany. But they didn't complete the mission and lied to cover up their failure. Well, lo and behold, the doctor of death resurfaces, still alive further east, in post-Soviet Ukraine, exposing the charade, and now the squad will reassemble to complete the task as the debt they owe to Dr. Vogel's victims. So what's wrong with that? Because the film is not an accurate portrayal of the real fate of Nazi war criminals, and is a backhanded way of exonerating Mossad and Israel from the politically selective way in which it sought these people. First of all, the majority of real Nazi criminals were not in the Soviet bloc. This implication is merely a way of conflating World War II with the Cold War. Having the good hair doctor resurface in a post-Soviet republic is also a convenient fiction. The real Nazi criminals were, for the most part, not living behind the gloom of the Iron Curtain, exaggerated for bullshit effect in the cinematography I've seen in the trailer clips of this film. They were living protected lives in the son of the Federal Republic of Germany or some Andean Republic of South America as respected businessmen, professionals, or government employees. Anytime Mossad or Israel really wanted them, they knew who they were, where they were, and did not have to go on secret missions behind barbed wire. The problem is that most of them had stronger protection than barbed wire and iron curtains. The protection of money, of their social class, of Western governments and, and intelligence agencies, of their common anti-communist values with the West German and Allied governments. Under Conrad Adenauer, they had no trouble whatsoever reintegrating back into German life as the respectable bourgeois gentlemen most of them had formerly been. Just as they covered for Adenauer during the Nazi years, so Adenauer covered for them. And Israel, being a far-flung outpost of the Western Alliance, was content to look the other way. Hence the location of this totally fictitious Nazi criminal Dr. Vogel in East Germany, and then in the Ukraine. So politically convenient, and so misleadingly for the film's audience, who predictably will know less than Jack about the whole subject. Birkenau Death Camp, as stated, was, of course, part of the Auschwitz-Birkenau complex. Auschwitz was the labor camp, Arbeit Mach Frei and all that, while Birkenau was the actual site of the death facilities, the gas chambers and crematoria. It was nothing but a death camp, pure and simple. For those knowing anything at all about it, its real angel of death was the well-known Dr. Josef Mengele. He did not reside behind the Iron Curtain, but was knowingly allowed to flee Europe by his Western allied captors to resume life in South America as owner of a pharmaceutical company. Mossad did make half-hearted attempts to get at him, but in the end left him alone. Capturing Eichmann was a big enough bone to throw at the crabs to chew on. To extract another one from Latin America would upset its governments too much, whose favor the U.S. in particular needed during the Cold War, so well enough was left alone. This real politic is exactly what makes the premise of the debt such bollocks. The real Birkenau angel of death, Josef Mengele, M.D., died a natural death from a stroke while swimming. Other fish, large and small, who swam around to the end of their day, safe and sound from any debt to their victims, and any debts by Israeli debt collectors if any attempts were made, included Gustav Wagner, another so-called angel of death, the deputy commandant of Sobibor death camp, renowned for his capricious and sadistic dispensing of final solutions. Released by the U.S. Army, even though on the U.N.'s most wanted list, which is likely why, and made his way also to South America, living in comfort in Brazil under his own name. No one even began looking for him until 1979. Then there was Hans Globke, who served as Conrad Adenauer's post-war director of the state chancellery for 10 years, 
was co-author of the Enabling Act that allowed Hitler to grasp dictatorial powers in 1933, and of the Nuremberg Laws, or officially the Law for the Protection of German Blood, subjecting German Jews to an apartheid regime, the first, if not inevitable, step to Dr. Mengele's care in Birkenau. He also helped arrange Jewish deportation and confiscation of German property during the Kristallnacht, and helped Adolf Eichmann increase the bureaucratic authority of the Gestapo. Did anyone care to collect the debt he owed? No. As a rabid anti-communist, Herr Globke was also Adenauer's national security advisor, and the CIA even pressured Life magazine to delete any references to his connection with Adolf Eichmann. He flew the coop free as a bird, and Prime Minister Ben Gurion didn't care to ruffle feathers in Bonn or Washington over him. Then, there was General Reinhard Gehler, the Third Reich's chief of German military intelligence on the Eastern Front, site of the great majority of Nazi crimes against humanity, who was specifically recruited by the U.S. to set up a Cold War spy ring called the Galen Organization, where he recruited some of the worst former Nazi collaborators as agents. He served as the West German Federal Intelligence Service chief until 1968, 23 years after the war. So if the mythical Dr. Vogel was at work in East Berlin, it was his comrade Galen who would have thanked him out and set the Mossad on him, because Galen helped train the Mossad in 1951. So, if Israel was really looking for top Nazis to snatch, they didn't have to sneak through Checkpoint Charlie to do it. Their biggest catch, Adolf Eichmann, was not cornered in East Berlin or some backwater in the Ukraine, but in Argentina, working for Mercedes-Benz of Buenos Aires and thinking nothing wrong with it until 1961. That is why, when it comes to historical honesty in film, the debt owes its viewers a big-time apology. Damn. Who's that knocking so imperiously, disturbing my Saturday afternoon? Hello? Who? Aros Grozani? The Waffen SS commando leader who rescued Mussolini at Hitler's personal order, and commanded the post-war werewolf underground, and coordinated for the Odessa organization. Didn't you even train the Egyptian army and Palestinian commandos like Yasser Arafat? Well, what brings you on the line? Just to remind our viewers that you were also a big fish in the Reich's pond, and the Jews would have done themselves great credit by coming after you. Well, so why didn't they? Because Herr Galen and the Americans thought you were still a useful hero to the free world. They owed you a lot. So that's where the real debt was paid.